I want to show you how you estimate alpha and beta um, for the capital asset pricing model. So the capital asset pricing model says the expected return for security I equals the risk-free rate plus beta I times the, ex the market risk premium, which is the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So if we want to estimate this, one way to do this is to subtract the risk-free rate from both sides of the equation, and we get this here. We get this regression model. So we have the excess return for the stock equals alpha i, our intercept term in a regression, plus beta i for the market, which happens to be our measure of systematic risk, times the market risk premium, plus an error term. So if cap m holds, then alpha should be zero, okay? And beta represents the systematic risk of the firm. So we're looking to see if there's any excess return here. And you can do it for an individual stock or you can do it for um, uh, mutual funds. Uh, Michael Jensen estimated this alpha or it's a measure of performance. If a mutual fund outperforms the market, then they're going to have positive alpha. So how do we do this? Well, we've got to get some data. So we can get the company price data or the mutual fund price data from Yahoo Finance. And we can get the market risk premium data from Ken French's website. So some of you may be familiar with uh, the work that um, Eugene Fama and Kenneth French did um, estimating uh, returns. And in fact, I will discuss some of the Fama French models in another video. But what do we have to do? We have to download the data. We're getting price data from Yahoo Finance, so we're going to have to convert them to returns. Uh, we can download data from Ken French's website, but we need to reformat the data to get it to work. And then we're going to use Excel to estimate alpha and beta. So let's see if we can do that. All right, so let's start here with uh, Yahoo Finance. So I'm going to look up Apple. A-A-P-L is their ticker symbol. And here we have information on Apple. And you can see their beta is 1.19, or P-E ratio. But you can also get historical data. And you can get daily data. You can get weekly data. I'm going to use monthly data. And what you can do is you can set the dates that you want here. So, in fact, I'm using uh, 2017, so uh, January 1st, or January of 2017 to December of 2022. So you can set the dates you want. You can pick the max. You can pick the last five years. You hit Apply, and you'll get this information here. Okay, This gives you prices, and you can download them. So I've already done that to make this uh, a little shorter and easier video. So let's go here. Here I have the Apple data. And I downloaded this data. And I downloaded, actually, uh, December of 1999, because I'm going to need that to compute the return from 99 to 2000. So you get these numbers. These are prices, open, high, low, close, and adjusted close, and also the volume. All right, we're going to use the adjusted close because the adjusted close adjusts for dividends and stock splits. So how do we compute that? I have the little formula here. You can take the price in year T. In this case, it would be January of 2000 divided by the price in year T minus 1, which would be December of 1999 and then subtract one from it. So I put that formula in, I copied it down, and once you put the formula in, you can copy it down so that you don't have to type it so many times. And here it has a formula. What I wanted to do was compute it or convert it to actual numbers. So what I did is I copied this, so I highlighted this, and I copied it, and then when you paste it, you choose not the regular paste, but you choose this paste one, two, three, which pastes values. So now they're actual numbers. 
And the reason I did that is if I want to copy this into some other spreadsheet, which I'm going to do to make it a little simpler and not so sloppy that I have so many numbers in one, you know, one worksheet, um, you'll want to do that. And I also converted it to percentage. So you can do that by hitting this percent key and then adjusting the number of decimal places here by you can increase decimal places or you can decrease decimal places. I'm going to leave it at two decimal places. When you do it, it, you, it doesn't show any decimal places, so you may want to expand it a couple of places. Um, Excel keeps all the numbers, but you would like to show probably more decimal places. Okay? The second thing we need is we need Ken French's data. So if you go to Ken French's website, and you can just search him out on Google, <clears throat> you'll find that he's done a great job of, of collecting and making this data available to researchers and students everywhere. And he has numerous data sets here. And he uses the crisp tape and he gives you details on how these are com computed. Okay, so right here I'm going to use the Fama French three-factor model. And he gives you details on, on how this stuff is computed which I will discuss in a later video when I talk about the Fama French three-factor model. But if you download this, you get a CSV file, which you can open in Excel. And again, I've done that and I've downloaded it, and this is what you get. So the dates here are done this way. See if I can make this a little bit bigger. Okay, it's 1926 um, and the month is July, 1926. Um, 08, August, etc. So that's how the data is. And this is 2.96%, but he reports it as 2.96. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to convert this data to percentages. So what I did over here is I took the data, okay, I took what was in B2, and I divided it by 100, and then I reformatted by hitting this percent key. And then I just, once I did that, I just copied it to um, the whole row and then copied it all the way down the, um, or copied it to the other columns and then copied it all the way down. So I've converted this all to percent. So it's in the same format as the Apple data. Okay, so now we want to do the regression. And again, what I've done is I've put these all together to make it easier for us. Right, I could copy all of this down, but that would make the video quite long, and um, it's not necessary. Okay, you should have a pretty good idea of how to do this, and I can, if you write a comment about this, I can always uh, do another video on this. But numerous people have done this and and presented how to convert the data to percentages and to convert convert the. Uh, uh, price data from a stock or mutual fund to returns. So I have here is I've put together this return data, okay, and I hear I'm only going to use this market minus the risk-free rate. These other two factors come from the three-factor model, and I'm not going to use those right here, but I will use those in um, my next video. And again, here I have the dates. I'm using the date format that they happen to use in Yahoo Finance, so 2017-01, 2017-02, uh, etc. Um, so over here I had the Apple returns that I copied, and I'm only using 2017 to 2021, and it's monthly data. I need the excess returns, so what I've done is I've taken what's in this cell here, the return for 2017 January and subtracted the risk-free rate and then I copied the formula down and again you copy by putting the formula in and then just get it going from this three-dimensional plus sign to this two-dimensional plus sign just dragging it down so now I have all the data I need the next step is estimating the regression and since I'm in Excel and I really only need alpha and beta it's pretty easy to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data and you see I have a data analysis tool pack here. If you don't have this, 
you can get this by going to File, Options, Add-ins, and down here it says Excel Add-ins. Click Go, and up here you'll see some different things. I've clicked on the Analysis Tool Pack. If yours is not clicked on, click it on and hit OK, and then it should show up here. So let me click the Data Analysis Tool Pack, and they have all kinds of calculations they'll do for you. Descriptive statistics, ANOVA, single factor, etc. We want to do regression. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to choose the different cells. So I want my Y variable to be Apple's return. So I'm going to click this on and I'm going to highlight this and then I need to put in the X range and I'm going to put this in and you'll notice that I'm highlighting the label and when you do that if you click on labels then when it reports the regression it will report um, it will list those labels and if you're using several independent variables it's much more helpful than just having x1, x2, x3 so this is set for a new workbook, so I'm going to click OK, and here is our regression. So let me just uh, expand the um, columns so everything fits nicely, and let's see what we have here. So we've estimated the beta here at 1.139, so about 1.14, so pretty close to what we saw on Yahoo Finance which was 1.19. I'm using a slightly different data set because I'm estimating over um, from you know only up to December of 2021 and they're estimating through the most current month. You can see that it's significant. It has a t-value of 6.098 and a p-value that is incredibly small that they have to actually put in you know, 10 to the minus 08 power. You can see that there's an intercept term and that it is marginally significant. Okay, not quite 5%, a little over 5% p-value, but it's, it's, it's um, better than the 10% value. So you can see that basically there's something that this regression is not picking up. All right, and that's been the argument about the capital asset pricing model that you know if it works if it's the correct model then when you estimate any returns for um, any alphas for any securities or um, portfolios you should get an alpha equal to zero okay we don't here which means that the model is probably not correctly specified so in the next video I will show you how to estimate the um, Fama French three-factor model, which includes um, two extra factors to try and see if we can capture um, what is missing from simply using the market risk premium to estimate uh, this model.